Yeah, I think one sheet in there. This is sort of a, a basically the same color I used in the last one, like a blue gray. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm doing a homework for virtual um, Panair workshop with uh, Professor Robert Chiro. I went to paint a wisteria garden. I had a, a value study, some sort of. Now I'm working on the final work. Um, I got uh, a Chinese uh, painting um, ink called uh, Transparent white ink. It's virtually a, a um, uh, water resist, but it's different from the masking, masking liquid because we don't have to lift it, uh, but it blocks the absorbency on the surface of the paper. Let's just try it out, see what happens. So I got some uh, kind of cool gray uh, to to paint the background, see if that will happen. But if not, I'm going to cover it with the white, the white chair, you know what I mean? Um, well, let's see. If I block it, it's not very obvious, but there's some difference, I guess. So that's maybe a good idea because it's going to be not pure white. With just a little different, I can distinguish at least the structure of the architecture, the, the chair. Um, so I don't have to void it, you know. I just kind of like paint it through like that. That's what I try to make things easier here. So we just paint the whole paper, eliminate all the white, see what happens. And I got some warm for the, for the foreground. We, we dilute the, the watercolor. Actually, I'm using this uh, Eternal Designer gouache. My, my Christmas gift from Amy. Um, I would use it as watercolor though. I, I don't want to use the opaque yet. Maybe, but I have the option with this color, I can easily cover or recover the, the white if I missed it. So I just do a overall wash, a cool background with this warm ground a full ground. Um, then I'll go back to add some some shadow things like that. This one doesn't work. See. Um, anyway, I'm going to just uh, paint it with some warm on the wood chair and uh, this fountain should be much lighter. I will use gouache. The wisteria is purple, so let's just use lavender, lavender color. Dilute it. It's a lot of water. Yeah, that's about it. So I will just put saturation, then I will do the highlight with gouache as well. And grouping is my main uh, for yeah, I, I'm not working with the clusters yet. So some, it should have some natural background for white, but uh, anyway, it's gouache, so I'm going to use white anyway. Um, so that's, that's my first wash. I will come back with the, uh, some more uh, darks and uh, lights later. Just uh, you can use the 
hair dryer to dry it, I think. This is some bush where I don't want to leave any white, so that's why I'm still working on this. And I would create a path from uh, just like around here with the shadow. I think the cast shadow of some trees, but that would come after the paper is dry, I think. So let's take a pause. A bird is still on it and then it blew it off. It looks like yeah. it's like a beautiful yeah. model. Is the point of doing that just to have the effect of whatever it looks like when it's the monotype? Yeah, just is that really, really fresh, one off kind of mm -hmm. thing? I love monotypes. I love the characters as well. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice nose tearing sketch there, basically. Yeah. Thank you. And then we'll, uh, we'll go. Yeah, this one has that monotype feeling to it, too. Said that, you know that this is what happens when you when you get this kind of stroke when you don't go over it. Yeah. It's just it's one stroke and that's it. And you just leave it and that's uh. the belief is that um, really you can do no wrong. So why not just leave what you what your first instinct was. I like the front leg uh, on the the one that's further in, that it's just a suggestion, no, the leather one. The front leg that's just a suggestion of the chair. If the back leg of the front, of front two. Chair. <laughs> yeah, the, the front leg. Of which front chair? chair? The one, the front leg of the chair that has just a suggestion of the leg. It's not some, yeah. That is so cool. That's the back one. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's the front leg of the far side. Yeah, this one right there. That one right there? Yeah. Driver's <laughs> <laughs> side. <laughs> and you know, if you look at these brush strokes here, these are just one, one draggy stroke. Yeah. You get that a lot in monotype too, because it just catches the tops of a stroke. So you get something like this. This has got a really, really nice feeling to it. I, I like the sharp contrast you have in here too, the really dark dark and the really bright lights. Yeah. That's a good way to do things. Uh, I, I told Hector this too, maybe a little bit more shadow over the top. Mm. Just something, not not a lot, but maybe some a little bit of shadow there I, I can see. Um, let's see. Um, you, you've done everything really, really well. Thank you. I love the reflected light under here. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow, what I'll do is on the planes that are facing downward, generally speaking, a lot of times there's something warm down here. In this case, there is. So that's a place where I'll hit something you know, a bit more on the orange side. Mm. Uh, whereas if we got a plane that's in shadow that's facing upward, like let's say the shadow back here, um, that would be a place where I would try to push a little more blue. Okay, that looks much better. Yeah, those, they're really, they're small little things, but they're taking up. I might even like, even the shadow of this, maybe in the background here, just a little bit more blue on the top. Whereas in the bottom, I might be a little bit more orange. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you, you I don't know, I, I wouldn't touch this chair because it's so nice, but yeah. it really does become quite the, the focal point. But 
I'm, I sometimes I would even hit some uh, blue reflected lights on the tops of these and orangey in the bottom. But okay. Yeah, I wouldn't do it on this one. I think part of its charm is that it's so austere. Yeah. And I love the way it just overlaps the bird band. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit at the top there. These colors you're using here in the wisteria are just perfect. Thank you. I don't really know what to say. I used the gouache, but very diluted. Yeah. Now, there you go, you guys. So, you can use gouache. You can use, I almost said gouache color. <laughs> uh, you can use gouache just like watercolor. You can thin it out and use it just like watercolor. You can use it thick and it gets a little opaque. Or you can use it somewhere in between and get these translucent effects. Yeah, I use the semi-opaque gouache, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Thank you. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful piece right there. Yeah. yeah. I'll do the modifications yeah. as you suggested. Is that it, you guys, or what? Yeah. I think so. Thank you.